intentions could not be more clear But now you're here for me As I'm for you Welcome to North Devon We had Croyd for Gold Coast Ocean Festival Presented by Blackthorn West Coast UK Basically, it's a festival which encompasses multi-sports from Ironman, skateboarding, surfing, expression sessions, para karting and kite surfing. Three venues and multi-sports. Well thanks Nick, yes, three venues and many sports. We start at uh, Willacombe, Willacombe Bay, where we have the skateboarding and the longboarding. It's also the finish of the Super Ironman event, but more about that later. Then we move around Baggy Point to Croyd Bay, and we've got the surfing and new this year, the beach volleyball. Some of the best in Great Britain are competing here. And finally, we go across to Saunton Sands. And that is the start of the Biotribe Big Boy Paddle, which takes them around to Croyd Bay, and also where all the kite surfing and paracarting takes place. This is the windy beach, and this is where the wind sports those Earth and Sea sponsored events take place. Well, we're going to start off the weekend of festivities with the Biotribe Big Boy Paddle. Much bigger field this year. Last year, I think we had eight or nine competitors. This year, we're over 20 competitors. And hopefully, the controversy of last year won't take place. There was uh, a limit on the board length, same as this year, 10 feet. And it seems as though the winner, who was uh, Wayne Waxer Cowie, who's racing this year, his board was just a little over and uh, the boys didn't like it too much so this year they've been very strict on the measurements but there's no doubting that the defending champion the local boy from Croy Bay Wayne Cowie a local surfboard maker I think he makes the Utopia surfboard he's now uh, rounding the down end point which takes them round into Croy Bay in all it's about two and a half kilometers of paddling they have to go around the point here, then go all the way up to the end of Croy Bay before they turn right and a short beach run to finish where, as I mentioned, all the boards will be checked very stringently. So leading Wayne Carey, second place, this is uh, Joe Shepherd. I didn't mention there's something like 250 quid up for grabs for the winner, 100 pounds for second and uh, 75 for third. And in third place at the moment, I think it's James uh, Yeo here. Different styles, as you can see, and they really do chop and change throughout. Give it a bit of a respite. This is the lying down method. As we can see, Wayne Waxakawa here going for his second consecutive title, and the organizers have said that if he wins it uh, three in a row, he can keep the, the trophy. I don't know if he's uh, too concerned about that, but he is really concerned about uh, winning. He really is a class of his own, and uh, I think he has raced the Molokai to uh, Oahu leg of the Hawaiian Ocean Fest, which is actually affiliated to this event this year, or should I say, the Gold Coast 2001 Ocean Fest is affiliated to the big one, the big daddy of them all out in uh, the Hawaiian Islands, the Hawaiian Oahu Ocean Fest. This is Joe Shepard coming round as uh, we just saw Wayne Waxer there coming up towards the end of the two and a half kilometer paddle, and here he is coming up through just about 30 minutes for that paddle. A little deceiving, the surf's not that high, it's only about two feet, but it is very rough as they ran the uh, the points between Saunton and Croyd. That's Joe Shepard coming through to second, and James Yeo uh, does in fact take third place with Daniel Thornton fourth, and Nick Haynes fifth. Well, Croyd Bay, where the end Croyd also Bay, is the center for the new event this year, the beach volleyball. After the success of the Olympics, where certainly beach volleyball really did take the biscuit, They've included it in this year's event, the Gold Coast Ocean Fest. Two major events, the King and Queen of the Beach, and the Queen of the Beach went to Mo Glover, the Olympian of Atlanta, and the King of the Beach was Colin Patterson, a Scotsman from St. Andrews. Now it turns to Westwood Ho for the start of the Super Ironman event, and that's coming up next.
Now, Danny, the core event of the weekend is the Super Ironman, and Nick Williams is down near the start with the organiser, Sean Latham. Gold Coast Ocean Fest premier event for the weekend is the Super Ironman event. Nick Thorne, last year's champion. Sean, for uh, today's event, who's going to take it out? Do you think Nick's going to clinch it? I think Nick's the man. Um, most people's money is on the guy, although we've got strong contenders by guys like Andy Biden, Glenn Eldridge. These guys are going to be challenging uh, the main man, Tricky as he's known, and we're really proud that uh, Blackthorn have come on board this time to sponsor our premier event, uh, the Super Iron Man. Well, it is the premier event, and it's also the toughest event. These are tough competitors. And this year, we've got some 20 competitors, including two women, who set off before the men some 20 minutes earlier. So they're just walking down. Originally, it was going to be in a Le Mans start here at Westwood Ho, but they decided because of the surf, the very rough conditions, uh, that they're actually going to get them in the water first for safety. So they're away. The 18 men are off, and uh, they've really got to chase down the women. It's something like 23, 24 kilometers of, uh, well, not kayaking. They've actually got 13 kilometers of kayaking. It takes them from Westwood Ho around the Fairway Buoy, which marks the entrance to the channel up to uh, Biddyford and Barnstable. They go around the buoy into Saunton Sands, where there's another buoy before they turn out again and follow the course of the Biotribe uh, Big Boy Paddlers into Croy Bay. Once they get to Croy Bay, it's a little kilometre run just to uh, ease the legs off before they get back in the water. And another paddle, this time four and a half kilometres around Baggy Point. And Baggy Point today is not an easy place to uh, paddle around. It's very rough very choppy and a little dangerous so we'll see that uh, a little later in the show after that they get round to Puttsburg at the end of Woolacom Beach and then it's a three kilometer run up the beach before they put the wetsuits on and uh, final 1,000 meter swim which is then followed by 500 meters up to the finish line in all some three hours of extremely tough travel Sean mentioned defending champion there he is with the blue uh, kayak that's uh, Nick Thorne, Nick Tricky Thorne, the European surf life-saving Ironman champion and indeed the defending champion here. And I think certainly the times are going to be a little longer than last year. Perfect conditions last year, certainly the weather is perfect here, but it's uh, very rough. A little deceiving here as they now ran the fairway buoy. There's something like uh, three kilometres, three and a half kilometres into the paddle and leaving is Mark Ressel. And right behind him, Glenn Clapworthy. Five of them have got away, including Nick Thorne. The other two in there are Andrew Byatt and Keith Gammon. Keith Gammon, in fact, is the brother of Michelle Gammon, who is also competing in the women's race. She's also, like Nick Thorne, the European surf life-saving Ironman champion. The other woman is uh, Debbie Howes, and in fact, they've already overtaken Debbie. She took a rather wide line out to the fairway buoy, and uh, the boys were closer in and overtook her just before the boy. And now they're chasing down uh, Michelle Gammon, who is up uh, further up the beach towards the turn at Saunton Sands. So Mark Dressel here with uh, Glenn Clapworthy heading this five-some. Here comes the defending champion, Nick Thorne, and Andrew Byatt on the far side, in fact, the near side, and the other side is uh, Keith Gammon been joined by the safety boats it was a little rough for the safety boats to do the first part we had a couple of big boats with them for safety and fortunately as expected these are all uh, professional boarders no one came to grief so they're up on uh, Saunton Sands and you can see this is uh, where we mentioned early on that all the the uh, kite events are taking place kite surfing and para kiting and uh, huge fields this year I think we had 61 competitors in the uh, para kiting and unfortunately the weather wasn't that good for kite surfing certainly the saturday event was uh, just about a no-goer and sunday which is uh, in fact now the second day of the event uh, the weather's slightly better but the waves aren't that good to produce some uh, great kite surfing so wrestle is coming up to the turn and just in front of him looks as though uh, in fact they've just gone past michelle gammon this is the inward uh, boy where they turn around and uh, bang out left towards downward point and round into Croyd Bay. So Russell and Clapworthy have got away a little bit and in third position, the lead woman, Michelle Gammon, and then it's the likes of uh, Andrew Byatt, Keith Gammon, and the defending champion, 
Nick Tricky Thorne. But Keith Gammon there, he's the World uh, Surf Swim Champion. So we do have some pedigree in here. Uh, Glenn Eldridge, who Sean Latham mentioned, was racing, but he's just been selected for Great Britain and kayaking next weekend and decided to miss the event. So that's a miss for the event, but uh, good for Glenn that he's got uh, national honours. So they're heading towards uh, Downward Point. And as they do so, we're going to pop back I'm to, to Saunton and check out some kite surfing. In fact, Mark Shin won overall, Ben Hambry was second, and Chris Southwark was third in what was slightly a disappointing weather conditions for this great sport of kite surfing. Kite surfers take off. We're going to take off for a short break. When we come back, check out the paracarting. to Gold Coast Ocean Fest Downwind. in North Devon. We're going to catch up with the paracarting. This year, 61 competitors took uh, part in this event over two days. And it was three races each day. And the combined positions brought the winner. And indeed, it was the winner of the first race, Rolf Schaefer of Germany, who did take the overall honours. This is under the direction of Neil Godbold and Mark uh, Fosbury from the GB uh, Great Britain uh, Parasite uh, Company. And just at the start, we had a tango. You can imagine 61 of them going down with all these kites, all these ropes, and it's not easy to get out of the way. And these two boys, well, they had a bit of a problem early on. So that's uh, their race over with. They've lost so much time there. That's, in fact, uh, the overall winner there, 571, Rolf Shaler. And you might be interested to know that uh, they have their number for life. They stenciled early on, and throughout their paracarding career, they keep the number. And the conditions, well, wind-wise, were just about perfect, but the sand was a little wet, the tide hadn't gone out quick enough, and it was a little soft. And you can see some of them have got the small tyres, and some have the big tyres. This is the big tyres on the left of the picture here, which is much easier going up the, uh, the watery conditions near the beach. But downwind, I don't think it really matters. So overall, honours did go to Rolf Schaefer of Germany. Britain's uh, Simon Bosworth was second, and Alistair Press of Great Britain was third. This event actually was uh, the second round of the uh, British Kite uh, Sailing Association's summer competition. And heading overall is Rolf Shaler. Down in fifth position was uh, Adrian McCready. And this is his son, Joey, eight years old, showing us that age is not a barrier in paracyting. Well, back for the main action now, the uh, Blackthorn Super Ironman and the two leaders, Mark Russell and Glenn Clapworthy, are now uh, around the downward uh, point, coming into Croy Bay. They go parallel to the bay, turn in sharp right around the uh, turn buoy, then uh, jump off their kayaks, have a short run up and down the beach, which is only about a kilometre before they pick up uh, their paddles, the paddle boards. You can just see them there in the far distance, all lined up, ready to go. 
and if you thought this was a bit of rough and tough you wait till you see the paddling because it is extremely lumpy and bumpy as they go around uh, baggy point which is the point between croy bay putzborough and woolacombe so this is wrestle off the board first it's taken them something like uh, an hour and a half to get round here Clatworthy was second this is andrew bike going around in third position and right behind him keith gammon Nick Thorne, tricky, is just a bit off the pace, and right behind him, in fact, is uh, Michel Gammon. So the leaders now, Wrestle and Clatworthy, running up the beach, and indeed Clatworthy has gone past Wrestle. This is the lead woman, this is Michel Gammon uh, coming into the beach, trying to get a bit of a ride off the surf, but I did tell you the surf is pretty low, it's pretty me mediocre. They say on the, the surfing scale it's one to two feet. So Clatworthy, better run, faster run, coming into the finish of that kilometre before picking up his board now and then jumping back into the water and uh, paddling his way round to Puttsborough. So this really is an upper body uh, demanding sport. They've been on the kayak for over an hour using just about their arms and now this is it. All arms once again. Although you see a lot of them do put some upper body motion into it when they're sat on the board and lying on the board it's like paddling. This is just sort of, I suppose, if you've got a swim bench, this is what you've been doing, except you're going through the water, not pulling ropes. This is Nick Thorne. He was, uh, what, fifth in the water for the men, six overall, and already he's caught up uh, Keith Gammon. He's gone past Keith Gammon and closing down on Clatworthy, Byatt and Wrestle. Now, one of the problems for Clatworthy was that he went far left out to Baggy Point. The experts here, the local boys, including Nick Thorne and uh, Andy Byatt right in front of him there, went up near to the rocks, which of course is the danger uh, section, but it is the section without the tide. Further out left is where you go against the tide, and although the tide is going out, it's coming down in fact to low tide, which is about uh, half an hour from now, uh, it is much easier on the inward journey so as they come up towards the baggy point very famous point on this part of the north uh, devon coastline a couple of caves at the end which are beautiful places to go at low tide and uh, i can tell you quite a few people have been stuck out here been caught by the tide so nick thorne andy byatt gone past uh, glenn clatworthy as they come up to baggy point there are those caves i was talking about and you can see a lot of white water and they are very close dangerously close to the rocks here this is uh, very brave paddling by these boys because you can see that the rollers are coming in and it's not too easy to keep your balance. You've got this big board, it's what, 10 foot, 10 foot 4 long and about 2 foot wide, 18 inches to 2 foot wide. That's Clatworthy on the back getting the, the wash of the others as they plough the way through. And Clatworthy, well, Clatworthy's off. The wave took him off there, but he's right back on, which does show you it's uh, maybe a little dangerous event, but it's pretty safe because they've got these huge boards to hang onto. So I think that's the race over for Clatworthy. Certainly Thorne and uh, Byatt have taken an advantage as they go around Baggy Point. As the Super Ironman head towards Willacombe Bay, we're going to check out the Big Sport Longboard Classic. Uh, over two days, but Saturday really was a no-goer as uh, some 20 or 30 longboarders really did, uh, well, they didn't do a lot, did they, on their two boards. In fact, they have a choice. They can use the 9-foot classic board or the 10-foot nose rider board. And on day one, I don't think it really mattered what board they were on. But day two, the surf was up a little bit, and you don't need that much on the longboard. Winner of all was Edley, Elliot Dudley. Second was Sam Bleakley, Alan Reed was uh, third, and Ben Skinner was fourth. They went through a heat system, and those four ended up in the final. So Elliot Dudley took overall honours in the Big Sport Longboard Challenge at Woolacombe. Also on a board of a different kind is Nick Thorne, leading the Super Ironman, the defending champion, the European Surf Life Saving Ironman champion. He's looking to take his second consecutive title here in Gold Coast Ocean Fest. So he's in Puttsburgh Beach here. That's the far end of Woolacombe Beach, which is uh, perhaps one of the longest beaches in North Devon. That and Saunton, I would think, are just about equidistant. Now he dumps his board, and then he's got to run uh, three kilometres down the board. And one of the problems is there's an onshore breeze. It's a northwesterly, which is quite cool. Although the warm Atlantic drift comes in here, uh, making the water temperature not that bad, the air temperature with this uh, chill factor is pretty code and uh, one of the problems they had on this day was that they're all suffering from the code their hands their arms their upper body very cold indeed and in fact we did uh, drag out a couple with uh, hypothermia i can uh, report that no one was uh, the worst of the wear for it 
So this is Andy Byatt in second place. Glenn Clapworthy, who did all that work early on, is down into third position, and that's where he's going to end up. Three kilometres of running, and then they've got to wet, get the wetsuit on, and you can see Nick Thornier is having a problem getting his wetsuit on. His hands are so cold, he can't feel them. He's having to have a bit of a help, and I don't think anyone's going to complain. Indeed, he's lost a huge lead to Andy Byatt. Andy Byatt's in, uh, what, T3 or T4, is it, with, with him? as uh, Glenn Clatworthy comes down through in third position. Big crowds out here, though, not as big as uh, we would expect because of this northwesterly wind, which makes it pretty chilly sunbathing on the beach. So finally, it's a thousand meter swim, and Nick Thorne, once he got his hands warm, started to do the business. In fact, Andy Byatt did close a little bit early on. This is Byatt coming through the, uh, the first buoy. Uh, he closed to about 40, 50 meters, and then uh, Nick Thorne got into his stroke and pulled away and in fact uh, came home a comfortable winner. But this is Byatt in second position as Thorne now comes up towards the last buoy and you can see it is very lumpy indeed. And the tide is very strong here and the, uh, the piece of water where they swam parallel to the beach, they were having problems just going against the tide. This is the third uh, swimmer. This is Glenn Clapworthy, who's going to take the bronze medal here in the Ocean Fest Super Ironman event. As our winner, the local boy Nick Thorne comes home to take his second consecutive title. Three hours and uh, 13 minutes was his time. About 20 minutes slower than last year, but who cares? He's a winner. Second was Andy Byatt, and third was Glenn Clapworthy. For the women, well, it was uh, Michelle Gammon. She led all the way, and uh, Debbie Howes came home a valiant second. So Gammon takes the women's title as Nick Thorne takes the crown. Picks up a few quid as well. A very code Nick Thorne holds aloft the trophy. Well, that's just about it for the 2001 Gold Coast uh, Ocean Fest. We're going to leave you with the old skateboarders. Red Bull brought in the ramp, and the boys did the business. Hope you've enjoyed it. This is Ian Sweet for Nick Williams. See you next year, 2002 Gold Coast Ocean Fest.